Hello and welcome! Once a CFD simulation is set up and solved in ANSYS Fluent, the solution data needs to be post-processed in order to extract meaningful results. An important aspect to understand about post-processing in ANSYS Fluent is that post-processing operations such as contours, path lines, etc. are performed on surfaces. In this lesson, we will learn about the most commonly used surfaces and how to create them. So, without further delay, let's get started! Post-processing is a general term that includes all the ways that we interact with and examine the simulation results. Post-processing can be broadly classified into two categories, qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative post-processing involves contours, vectors, path lines, and much more, which can be used to visualize what the flow looks like and is primarily used to gain a visual insight into complex flow phenomena. Quantitative post-processing involves XY plots, histograms, averaged reports, forces, fluxes, etc., which can be used to get numerical data to identify trends, patterns, comparison with analytical, experimental or other similar simulation results. All the necessary post-processing tools in ANSYS Fluent are grouped under the results tab. Let us now use an example case to familiarize ourselves with the layout of the results tab and to understand the process of creating post-processing surfaces. Launch ANSYS Fluent in solution mode. Once the ANSYS Fluent solver launches, load the provided case and data files. The results tab is located to the right of the solution tab. In this tab, there are groups for graphics and plots where we find various flow visualization operations and there is also a group for reports with different panels that can be used to extract quantitative information from the solution data. As mentioned earlier, in ANSYS Fluent, all post-processing operations are performed on surfaces. ANSYS Fluent has options to create many kinds of surfaces using the options under the surface group. To create surfaces, we can either go to the context menu under Create Surfaces or we can go to the Outline view, right-click on Surfaces and choose New. Let us now understand how to create the commonly used surface type, that is, point surfaces, plane surfaces and ISO surfaces. First, let's look at the point surface. The point surface sounds like a contradiction, but it's really just a point. Suppose we want to monitor the flow field variable at a particular location as done by probes in experiments. We can do so by creating a point surface. The most commonly used approach when we are creating points is just to type the coordinates in the panel. There are two other approaches. Using the mouse probe and selecting any location in the domain to specify the point. In this approach, the point tool automatically snaps to the nearest node or cell center depending on the option selected in the Snap on Probe Click group box. The other approach is to interactively move the point tool to the location in the domain where we want the point surface to be created. You can move the point tool by left-clicking and holding any of the axes to move the point in that direction or by clicking the ball in the middle of the point tool to move it freely. Simply click Create to define the point surface. Now let's look at plane surfaces. There may be cases when we want to visualize the solution on a 2D plane to understand the flow field of the problem. For example, a velocity contour to see the boundary layer formation near the object. In such a case, a plane surface can be used. Plane surfaces can be created through the Plane Surface Panel dialog box. There are a variety of intuitive methods to define a plane. 
it can be aligned with any of the Cartesian axes or we can also define the point in normal or define three points through which the plane passes. Depending on the method we pick, a variety of different tools is available to help us position the plane in the graphics display. For any of the three Cartesian plane methods, there is a tool that's aligned with the axis, using which you can interactively create the plane in the computational domain. You can even directly define the location of the plane by entering the coordinate of the chosen Cartesian axis or there's also a select with mouse option which you can use to interactively select a point in the computational domain to locate the plane. You have the option to create multiple planes at a prescribed spacing. Just increase the number of surfaces to a value greater than 1 enter a spacing greater than zero and the display will update. In the three-point method, you can position the plane by interactively moving the plane tool, that is, by manipulating the axis triad located in the middle of the plane. You can rotate on an axis, move the plane within a single axis or grab the center of the axis to relocate the point and the entire plane, anywhere within the domain. Alternatively, you can either enter the coordinates for each of the three points or select them using mouse probe. When using the point and normal method, you can position the plane interactively, similar to the three point method. Alternatively, for defining the point, you can either enter the coordinates of the point or select it using mouse probe. For defining the normal, you can directly specify the endpoint of the normal through i, x, i, y and i, z or you can choose compute from view plane to position the plane normal to your view in the graphics display window or choose compute from surface and select a surface to position the plane normal to it. For our case, we will just go ahead and choose zx plane to create the plane surface. The third most common type of surfaces are isosurfaces. There may be instances where we want to display the cells of a model that have a certain constant value of the selected variable. For that, isosurfaces can be used. First, we will choose a variable under surface of constant. Let's just use temperature. Do not make any selection from the from surface list if you want the isosurfacing to be performed on the entire domain. And similarly, do not select a zone from the From Zones list to avoid restricting isosurfacing to a specific cell zone and instead run through the entire domain. Now, when we click Compute, the minimum and maximum value of the chosen variable from the simulation result is displayed here. Then, if we move the slider bar, a temporary display of the isosurface will appear that corresponds to the value in the panel and if we move this back and forth, we can see how the surface updates according to the value. There is also an option to create offset surfaces similar to the option in the plane surface panel. Instead of relying on the slider bar, the most common scenario is that we know the exact value we want and that can be entered directly in the panel. Note that when we enter the value directly, the temporary surface display does not update. Simply click Create to define the isosurface. If the surface is not displayed, go to the Outline view and drag the surface into the graphics window. Apart from the commonly used surfaces discussed till now, there are other types of surfaces that can be created. For example, to display results on a boundary, we can create a new zone surface. Lined and track surfaces can be used when we want to plot the solution data variation along a line. To display data on a line 
plane, circle, sphere or general quadric surface, we can create a quadric surface by entering the coefficients of the quadric function that defines it. To clip the surface between ISO values and have it span a specified subrange of a selected scalar quantity, the ISO clip method can be used. Other surface types such as partition, imprint, structural point, etc. can also be created. Please refer to the user guide for a detailed understanding on how to create and use them. Note that all surfaces that we create are listed under the outline view and to make changes to a surface after it has been created, just right click and choose edit. So for the plane, let's say we want it at a very precise value and change the name to something more descriptive. It is easy to do that. We can edit surfaces at any time and as often as we need. The last option we will talk about is Manage. The Manage option in the Surface group lets you edit, rename, delete, group and ungroup surfaces and obtain information about their components. The Surfaces dialog box that pops up when the Manage button is clicked displays both surfaces created by the user and the automatically generated surfaces based on the boundaries of the model. Grouping surfaces is useful if you want to perform post-processing on a number of surfaces at a time. For example, you may want to group several wall surfaces together to generate a contour plot of temperature on all walls. To post-process results on each wall surface individually, simply ungroup the surfaces. Additionally, various topological information such as surface type, number of points, 0D, 1D and 2D facets on the surface and surface ID of the selected surfaces can also be obtained from the surfaces dialog box. Note that grouping, ungrouping and deleting can also be done from the outline view after selecting the appropriate surfaces. Let's summarize what we learned in this lesson. We understood the concept of post-processing and the different types of post-processing options possible in ANSYS Fluent. Next, we learned in detail about how to create three most commonly used surfaces, namely point surface, plane surface and ISO surface. Then, we briefly discussed about the other surfaces that are available in the surface group of the results tab for post-processing. Finally, we learned about the various options available under the Manage option of Surface Group. With that, let's wrap up the lesson.